Okay. The last speaker of this session is Claude Crepeau. We'll talk about the RGB no signaling game. Hello, everybody. Um, somehow, my talk has been scheduled in the zero knowledge section, but this is not at all about zero knowledge. But since I've been working with zero knowledge for a very long time, I believe I belong here anyway. So the purpose of this talk is mainly um, pedagogical. This is where I started. Um, I wanted to come up with an example of no signaling entanglement and so on, that was as simple as possible. So this is my co-author on this work, Xavier Quateroy from Lugano. Um, we hear things all the time about how entanglement is so strange. Something observed here affect what goes on there. Um, Spooky action at a difference, at a distance. And the famous Feynman even told us that nobody can understand quantum mechanics. Now, with this kind of attitude, nobody will ever understand quantum mechanics. So in order to explain quantum mechanics and give examples to people around us, we need simple examples. So I wanted to find something easy. Now, to do that, I use um, results that Bell initiated um, in the 1960s when he gave what's called Bell inequalities. He wanted to give um, evidence that entanglement does more than classical. And in order to do that, he defined what he called locality. Um, and locality is what you get if you have two people or more, but I'll stick to two people during this talk. Locality is what you get if you allow people to use determinism so they can compute things locally and they can share randomness. And everything they can produce like that without exchanging messages is what we call locality. Now, of course, if they can communicate, um, there's a lot more that they could do. If they can communicate because they exchange messages, the set of things that they can produce this way is much larger. And basically, what entanglement brought is the fact that there's something between locality, what we think is normal according to classical physics, and what we can do with signaling. So entanglement is what people think is the spooky action of it as a distance. And I'll try to exhibit that it's not and that you can all go home and explain to your family the kind of things you do. <clears throat> now, I'm going to explain this in the context of non-local games. Non-local games is a scenario where you have, say, two criminals that are going to be interrogated separately. And so before we they get interrogated, um, they're allowed to exchange randomness. So this is what the dollar signs they're exchanging at the bottom means. And they're going to be interrogated um, by a policeman, but in a context where they can no longer communicate. So they cannot exchange messages during the interrogation process, but um, they can use their own local computations and they can use um, they will get questions from um, the policemen, and um, they must compute their own answer using the shared randomness um, and give them back to the policemen. Now, this is typically why people get interrogated in, um, in, in police stations separately, because if you interrogate them together, as soon as one of them replies something, the other one is going to agree to it, whether it was true or not. If you separate them, you get a lot more power. And that's exactly what these games do. Now, we're considering two models, the local model as well as the entangled model. And in the entangled model, it's almost the same, but the criminals are allowed to start with um, quantum states 
instead of randomness, and they're allowed to apply measurements to their part of the states during the process. So when they're asked something um, from the policeman, they can pre-agree on a set of um, measurements they can do, like a camera, something to measure length, something to weight, and something to listen to heartbeat. These are measurements you can apply to a physical system in order to extract information, and you can use those so when um, the um, she-like criminal um, receives a question A, she can apply um, a corresponding measurement, say the camera, to obtain information X about her state. And when the he-like criminal um, receives an input B, he can apply a measurement B, which is to weight um, the state, obtain a Y, and reply that. So by doing this, um, they can also try to win the game. Um, and if they can use entanglement, it turns out that they can actually do more. Now, I haven't said what winning the game means, but ultimately, winning the game is established by a relation on the A, Bs, X, and Ys, and we declare that certain quadruples, A, B, X, and Y, are winning, and the other ones are losing. And we want to establish their success probability, which is the probability with, with which they can um, win by selecting a quadruple um, that is among the winning ones while the leftmost character only knows A and the rightmost only knows B. Now, all this is presented in terms of strategy. And a strategy for two people is simply any distribution that given inputs and out inputs A's and B's will select outputs X and Y according to some rules. And we describe all these strategies and we can compare them to each other. Now, the simplest of all the strategies that we can adopt are the deterministic one. So among the strategies, those that are deterministic only involve one character with his own input to compute its own output, and similarly on the other side. So there's no connection between them um, whatsoever. Now the next step is that if you allow them shared randomness, then it's almost as weak, but this is what now we call local. So they have local computations that are deterministic and local randomness. Now, this is the simplest model, and this model is very convenient, and we're going to use it a little bit all over the place because I'm going to, I'm going to define a notion of relating strategies among each other um, by using local calculations. So I'm going to say that the black strategy in the box implies the purple strategy if there's a local strategy for the two criminals where they use um, local calculations and shared randomness. But on top of that, they're allowed to use black boxes. So if you give them black boxes and you let them use them as much as they want, we say that the black boxes imply the purple box if I can implement the purple box by using local operations and as many instances of the black box that you like. Now, when I say implement, I don't exactly mean absolutely equal, but if asymptotically you can get as close as the purple box as you like by using as many black boxes as you like, then ultimately you get um, that the black box imply the purple box. So with this in mind, we defined a, a, a special box that I call the signaling box, the SIG box. And this box is very obvious. It receives an A on the left, and it outputs A on the right. So this is signaling the value A from left to right. And at the same time, it's signaling the value B from right to left. So this box is just letting them talk to each other as, as much as they like. Now, I claim that every strategy um, for two people can be obtained locally using signaling boxes. 
So if you're allowed to signal on top of being local, then you can do any strategy that you like. You can just talk in the middle of your strategy. So this is a diagram that I'm going to come back to many times. Um, it is what I call the non-locality hierarchy, and it contains the, the largest class of all these is the SIG class of all the strategies that you can obtain through the signaling box. So this is the signaling box, and every um, thing that follows from it is in the signaling class. Now, I'm going to specify two different types of signaling that are very similar. I'm going to call it one the right signaling where the information coming from the right side goes nowhere, it's lost, whereas the information coming from the left side goes to the right side. So this is signaling, but only in one direction. <clears throat> now, of course, this is weaker than the previous one because the previous one could go in both directions, but um, this one will define fewer strategies. So I use this color to represent the, the red strategies, uh, sorry, the um, right strategies and the left strategies are defined similarly from right to left. And then I can obtain um, all the strategies resulting from this one. So within the set of all the strategies, some of them can be obtained by simply only signaling to the right, some of them only to the left, and some of them can be obtained either way, and some of them require more. And finally, an obvious strategy is the identity. If I give you a value A and you just output A back, and if I give you B and output B back, um, then you're doing nothing with this um, box. The box is completely useless. But if you have local operations on top of that, then everything in the local class um, can be achieved from this uh, particular box. All right, so on top of that, we're considering those obtained by entanglement that I'm going to call entangled, entanglement assisted locality, and something else that's called commuting operators, but let's ignore it for today. Now, the game. So the game I wanted to introduce you came after I read this entry on Quora. Someone asked, could someone explain quantum entanglement like I'm five-year-old? And this guy, John Hudson, who was a, uh, who was a former quantum mechanics student from Stanford, gave this explanation. And I kind of like the explanation, but unfortunately, it's a signaling strategy. What he's describing here can actually be used to communicate. And that's not the point. Yeah, but the idea was good. So I started from what he wrote, and I said, OK, now let's find something really simple that will do exactly that. Now, what do we have in these examples that we explain to people all the time? When one of them is the magic square. The magic square is this primitive. If you know it, wonderful. If you don't, go read about it. I mean, the problem with this thing is you have to talk about binary values, a, a three by three matrix, and you want that the sum of each row be even, the, each column is odd, and so on. I mean, that's fine if I talk to computer scientists or even uh, typical science professor. Or, but if you want to talk of these things to your family or, I mean, people with almost no math, there's no way you can explain that to anybody. It's not going to work. The PR box by Popescu Rorlik is the other example. The XOR of the output is the end of the inputs. This is great, but what if you don't know what XOR and end is? You're wasting your time. So, I mean, you can try to make this as simple, but okay, but it's really mud too, and it, it, it doesn't work. Okay, so it just doesn't work. I mean, these examples, they're fine for us, but they're not fine for everybody. So now let me tell you a little courthouse drama. You have um, policemen, and they say, we interrogated these criminals. And I swear they were talking. Now the criminals say, OK, go ahead, just prove it. OK, I'll prove it, said the policeman. And then they start laughing. So let's see what happened. So this was in the police station. You have two interrogation rooms, two policemen, two criminals. You have the bus. You have the main place, food room. 
Let's stick to the interrogation rules for now. Now, they played a little game. They asked them questions. What did they ask them? Well, the game is called RGB, as in red, green, blue. The policemen, they pick a random color out of the three, independently, individually. So that policeman picked red and said that to his local criminal. Now, the criminal must respond the color, which is not the one given. So if he receives red, he must answer green or blue. OK, up to him how he does that. So the first constraint is that the criminal is not allowed to give the same color back. Same thing in the other interrogation room. The other one picks a color, one out of the three, gives that to his local criminal. He gives a color back, not allowed to be the same color. Now, to make it interesting, because if that's the only condition, it's very easy to win that. Now, to make it interesting, let's say they're not allowed to give the same answer back. Now, this is the game. In order to win the game, the criminals must reply different colors from what they're given, and they're not allowed to give the same answer. That's it. You can explain that even to five-year-olds. Because all you need here is an understanding of what different colors are, or a different anything. So using this only operation, difference, this is not the same as that. You have an example, well, I'm going to show you, you have an example where this is actually a no signaling game, which has a quantum strategy better than local. Okay, so this is a general case. You're given, you give an A, you get an X back, you give a B, you get a Y back, and the condition is that A should not be X, that shouldn't be Y, and shouldn't be B. And this should work, of course, whatever the distance between the parties. So if you have an interrogation going on on Earth, an interrogation going on on Mars, they should succeed with um, proper probability. So this is the game. And the winning condition is what I showed you. Now, there are two ways to win when the two colors given are the same. So if we look at the bottom two rows, if A and B are the same color, then the answers must be the other two colors, either green, red, uh, sorry, green, blue, or blue, green. That's it. These are the only two ways you can win. Now, however, if you're using different colors for A and B, say red and green, then there are actually three ways that will allow you to win this game. So these are the five ways you can win the game depending on what your inputs A and B are. So you can make this general whenever the top three rows and whenever A and B are different, and the bottom row is whenever A and B are the same. Now let me go through a number of possibilities. What about deterministic? Now, if I want to do deterministic, it means that whenever I get a choice, I must always give the same answer back. So let's say horizontally, if I see blue, I always give red. If I see green, I always give red. If I see red, I always give blue, and so on. Vertically, if I see blue, I say green. If I see green, I say blue. If I say red, I say green again. Now, this strategy doesn't win all the time. It actually wins eight times out of nine. The, pur the dark purple square is the location where they give the same answer back. So this strategy wins eight times out of nine if you're acting locally. Now, there are all sorts of strategies. This one wins four times out of nine. This one, five times out of nine. Now, I claim that this eight out of nine is the best you can do, that you cannot using deterministic solutions do better than eight out of nine. And I can show you this in one slide, three lines. Now, in order for A and X to be distinct, and because A can A take all three colors, X must take at least two of the three colors. Because if you take only one color, if X is always the same color, then it's going to be the same as A sometimes. And we disallow that. Now, for the same reason, Y must also take at least two colors. Now, if you have X taking at least two colors and you have Y taking at least two colors and there are only three colors, there must be a location where they are the same. 
And this proves that there, whatever you do deterministically, there will always be one of the nine entries where the two colors are the same. So the best we can do deterministically is eight out of nine. Now, I'm going to consider now a very special um, solution to the RGB game. I'm going to consider this very exact distribution where I take only two of the three cases at top and at the bottom. Now, it turns out that this particular strategy is actually equivalent in the way that I mentioned to the PR box. For one direction, if I have the, reg the RGB box and I want to use it as a PR box, you just rename your inputs according to colors, you interpret the output as bits, and it's a PR box. So there's a subset of the input output that's actually a PR box. Now, in the opposite direction, if you have access to two PR boxes, you can actually implement an RGB box. So you can go to the paper to read these details. But basically, if you have two such boxes, you can um, implement the RGB box. Now, what about the courthouse drama? The courthouse drama ends by the judge saying that they're not guilty. Because the policemen were trying to convince the, the judge that the criminals were talking, but indeed, the, strategy, the, PR, the RGB solution that they, they can use doesn't allow signaling. And therefore, it's not a proof that they were signaling. Even if they were winning the game 100% of the time, it doesn't imply that they were signaling, and therefore, they're not guilty. Now let me conclude by telling you just a little bit about the quantum strategy. The quantum strategy wins 11 twelfths of the time. And it's a very simple strategy. You define three measurements. The red measurement separates the zero from the one state. The blue measurement, these two um, diagonal states, and the green one this way. And basically, um, if you start with an EPR pair, you get the measurement described as green, red, or blue. You make the measurement, you get the outcome, and this will um, succeed 11 out of 12. All right, let me. Now, proving that 11 out of 12 is the maximum, well, that's about half our paper. So you go read the paper. Now, in conclusion, what I presented is a local strategy for this game, the simplest game I could come up with, which is 8-9 success probability. The quantum entangled one is 11 twelfth, and the no signaling one is actually winning with probability one. Now, this is the picture I showed you initially. No signaling is exactly the intersection and left and right signaling, and that's one of the results that came out of um, this work. Um, we have that the PR box as well as the RGB box are complete for this class. So anything in the class follows from this particular game. We know that the magic square is in, in the entangled, but we have no idea if there exists a complete box for entangled nor um, commuting operators. So this is my open question. Is there a complete strategy for entanglement? Um, and if so, make it as simple as possible so that everyone can find out about it. And I thank you very much. I just want to use a, one last minute to tell you, in case you didn't know, that QCrypt is going to be in Montreal in August. And so I encourage you to go check out um, the web page registration is about to open this week. And the very last one is very personal. I have an extra baseball ticket um, for tomorrow night. So if anyone is a baseball fan, then just come to me. I have an extra ticket. I'll be happy to give it away. All right. Thank you. Questions? So I have one question. So what, oh, sorry. so what happens when you have more than three colors 
if you try to define right. version... Well, if you go to four colors, yes. then it's totally obvious because one of them is going to stick to two of them, okay. the other okay. one to two okay. of them. So if you have four colors, it's very easy to win all the time. Okay. However, if you go to more people, mm -hmm. if you have like five people and six colors, yeah. I think this generalizes very easily that if you make more people more colors and you request that they cannot be the colors that they're given and they have to be all different from each other, I think the game generalizes pretty easily to more people. And this is one of my students working on this as a summer okay. project, as a okay, matter thank of fact. You. The questions, yes? Yeah. Um, when you had your left channel and right channel, does it make any difference if the people using the channels know whether the, what the channel is? So when you get the answer coming back that's actually hasn't come through from the other side, if you know or don't know whether that's happening, does it make any difference? Well, my first guess is no, but um, I'd have to think about it a little bit deeper. I mean, we assume that they know the channel. Now, if you don't know what the channel is, um, I mean, ultimately, if you, if you use the channel many times, ah, mm. it's not clear because it's hard to conclude anything because you cannot exchange information further. So um, I'll, I'll think about it. Okay, maybe one last question. Anybody? Is it fine? Okay, then thank you again. All right, thank you.